Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming to join us today. Uh, I'm just going to do the introduction. My name is Anne Drozd. I'm the museum coordinator at the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum. I'm going to start with the land acknowledgement for Cartoon Crossroads Columbus. Um, Cartoon Crossroads Columbus acknowledges that the ancient ancestors of the Eastern Woodland tribes, now referred to as the Adena and Hopewell cultures, inhabited the land we know as Ohio. Their descendants, including the living nations of the Shawnee, Miami, Wyandotte, Delaware, and Seneca Cayuga. We honor and respect the diverse indigenous peoples connected to this place that we gather. I'd also like to thank the sponsors of CXC, including the Greater Columbus Arts Council, the Ohio Arts, excuse me, sorry, the Greater Columbus Arts Council, the Ohio Arts Council, White Castle, Columbus Foundation, UBS, the Japan Foundation, and our other festival sponsors. So thanks to these supporters, all of these events are always free to attendees, and we are just very grateful for their support. So now I would like to introduce uh, the guest who is here to present to you. Um, Jessica Ruskin is the Education Director at the Charles M. Schultz Museum in Santa Rosa, California, and she came all the way here to Columbus today to share with you this wonderful program. So I'm going to hand it off to Jessica. Great. Thank you, Anne. And uh, thank, thank you for joining me. Um, as Anne said, I am here from the Charles M. Schultz Museum and Research Center in Santa Rosa, California. Raise your hand if you've ever been to California. All right, raise your hand if you've ever been to Santa Rosa. Uh, that's kind of what I thought. But that's OK, because I have brought the museum to you a little bit today. I'm going to show you some things, but we're mostly going to be drawing, cartooning, and creating animation. Uh, but since I'm from the Charles M. Schultz Museum, raise your hand if you know who Charles M. Schultz is. All right. Uh, who is Charles Schultz? Who is he? Excellent. That's exactly right. Charles Schultz is the creator of the Peanuts comic strip. This is Charles Schultz at his drawing desk. And raise your hand if you've heard of Peanuts. All right, excellent. Well, raise your hand if you've never heard of Peanuts ever. OK, that's great too, because Charles Schultz created a comic strip with characters you might recognize. And I'm going to play a really short video. And he created a whole cast of characters that even if you haven't heard of Peanuts, some of these characters might look familiar. So let's take a quick look. Who recognizes this guy? Anyone? OK. So who recognized any of those characters? Who can tell me the names of who you saw? Who did you see? Excellent. And who else? And Linus. Yeah, and that's from the, the person who said they didn't, hadn't heard of Peanuts before. So those are some of the main characters that Charles Schultz created. Who else did you see? Is the dog lazy? What's the dog's name? Someone said it. What's the dog's name? It is Snoopy. Well, and Charles Schultz created those characters, Snoopy, Lucy, Charlie Brown, and Linus, in a comic strip called Peanuts. And he created Peanuts for 50 years. Here's a Peanuts comic strip. So that, And even if you don't recognize the characters, um, a lot of people do know these characters all over the world. Charles Schultz created Peanuts between 1950 and 2000. 
And the comic strip appeared all over the world. So that means people in China, Brazil, Korea, India, uh, Ireland, Australia, they all read this comic strip. It um, has been translated into over 20 different languages. And these characters are famous all around the world, mostly for these kind of gags that we recognize. So right here, Lucy is pulling a football away from Charlie Brown before he can kick it. And this is a joke that Charles Schultz did 36 different times in the 50 years he created Peanuts. He had a lot of things in the comic strip that really kind of, you know, I guess people related to and things that we still remember. Here's Snoopy and he flies around on his doghouse, which some people may think may have seen before. Here's Linus who carries around a blanket everywhere he goes. And Charles Schultz actually was known for getting the term security blanket added into the dictionary. So he actually got that word accepted, although it's something that was happening for many, many years. Does anyone have a lovey that you carried around when you were little or that you still carry around? Yeah, so that's just what Linus did. So these characters, uh, here's another one. Lucy had a psychiatric booth where she handed out advice and Charlie Brown was known for getting his kite caught in the kite-eating tree. So Charles Schultz had these themes that he repeated throughout the 50 years of Peanuts that were really relatable to people and that people all around the world recognize. If, uh, the psychiatric booth is used often in a whole bunch of different settings for people handing out advice, especially in editorial cartoons. But we're not going to be doing that today because Charles Schultz well, we'll go to the next slide in a minute. During those 50 years, he created 17,897 comic strips. So that's a lot of comics. And his comics were so popular that they also got turned into animation, so animated shorts. Has anyone seen a Peanuts movie ever? Okay, so a Charlie Brown Christmas came out in 1965 and was so popular that next they made a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, and it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. And in fact, there are over 70 different animated Peanuts shorts and five feature length Peanuts movies that appeared in the movie theaters. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to make our own animation. So we are going to start with a very simple flipperama and then with some tomatropes. So if any but it doesn't have paper, you're gonna to wanna to get a piece of paper and a pencil from the back because we're all gonna start with flipperamas. We're gonna want blank paper, a pencil, and possibly coloring, but we might not get to the coloring yet. And this is where I'm going to want to use the whiteboard. So I go ahead and I hit, which one do I hit to go up? All right, because I'm, we are going to draw Snoopy together to create a flipperama together, and then you'll be able to make your own flipperamas. Has anyone heard of a flipperama before? Okay, so they were sort of popularized by Dave Pilkey and uh, Captain Underpants or Dogman, but we're gonna make a Peanuts flipperama to start. Okay, good. Yeah? Well, the dog mound books are some of my favorite. So, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna fold our paper in half. Just a blank piece of paper folded in half, right? Because this is gonna start us on our flipperama. And I am going to do a really quick how to draw Snoopy lesson. So as we're gonna follow along and we're gonna open the paper and we're going to draw Snoopy on just one side of it. So I'm going to flip it around backwards so that I have just half of my paper for drawing Snoopy. Because this is going to help when we make the flipperama. So see this whole page here is going to be empty right now. And I'm going to fold it. And we are going to draw Snoopy together. And I'm going to remind you that I'm Jessica and not Charles Schultz. And even though I've been drawing and teaching people how to draw Snoopy for years and years, uh, my Snoopy's not gonna look exactly like Charles Schultz's Snoopy. 
and that's totally okay. I maybe someday we'll give them a different name even. So um, it's okay if your Snoopy doesn't look like mine. That's what is great about drawing and art and cartooning is that we all make our own creations and however it looks is absolutely fine. There's no wrong way to draw cartoons. Charles Schultz said that the uh, thing he liked most about his job was that he was just drawing funny pictures and we're gonna do that today. We're gonna start with Snoopy's head and I want you to leave room for Snoopy's body. So I'm, we're gonna hold our paper this way, right? So that it's, uh, we're starting up at the top and down at the bottom. And we wanna make sure that this side is blank, all right? And we're going to draw on this side of our paper. So if I, I'm gonna do it really quick, oops. I'm gonna do it really quick so that Sorry, I'm gonna do the paper quickly, right? Cause it's down the middle and we're drawing on this side. And we're gonna start with a circle right toward the top for Snoopy's head. So let's start with a circle. And we're gonna go step by step to draw Snoopy. And then once we get our basic Snoopy, that's when we're gonna get a little more creative with it. We are going to draw a smaller circle that intersects with this big circle. And in the trickiest cartooning move you're gonna make today, we are going to trace around both circles, or we're kinda gonna ink around them, linking them together. So I traced around it, and now I am going to erase these lines in the middle, okay? So that's the hardest move. That's the hardest thing we're going to do. And you can see how it gives us kind of a different shape here than we had just with the circles. And I'm going to add one more circle. I'm going to put it right here and color it in. And that's Snoopy's nose. And come on in and get paper from the back and find somewhere to sit. We're going to add an oval on the side for Snoopy's ear. And Snoopy's ear is black, so I'm gonna shade it in. And that's gonna get rid of this line here. I'm not gonna have to worry about erasing. And we're not going to put Snoopy's face on yet. So we're gonna leave Snoopy's face blank. And that's because it's gonna be important when we do our fliperama, we're gonna want his face on a blank for the moment. But we are gonna add Snoopy's body. And Snoopy's body is a teardrop shape or a pear. So we're gonna draw a pear coming out of his neck, and I'm gonna erase where his neck and body meet. And the penis character's heads are about one head, it's kind of almost the same size as the body. Like they're, they're not actually fully proportioned. If they were walking around, they'd probably tip right over. Their heads are so big compared to their bodies. So the penis characters have great big heads, and they also have great big feet. So we are gonna draw two pancakes underneath his body and we're gonna attach them with legs. So, and then kind of erase the lines where they all meet. And I'm gonna like round, kind of flatten the feet a little bit. And I'm going to add paw marks. So Charles Schultz said it actually took him roughly four hours to draw his comic strip from beginning to end once he'd come up with the idea. Um, so good thing we're not putting together a whole comic strip today and we're just drawing Snoopy. I'm going to give a, Snoopy has a black spot on his back, so we're going to do a backward C and shade it in because we're seeing half of his black spot. 
So we're going to shade that in. And we're going to give him a tail because he needs his tail. We'll give him a tail right there. And his tail has a little tiny black spot on it too, which we don't really need to add because sometimes it's hard to even know if it's in the comic. And Snoopy needs some arms, so I'm going to do a letter J and loop it back up and give it some paw marks. So he's just got one arm down the side. And once you've got that, you've got your basic Snoopy. But the thing about animation and flipperamas and what we're going to do today is that you can't make animation with one image. You need more than one image. And that's why we folded our paper in half. Because what I want you to do now is you're going to fold your blank side on top of your Snoopy and you're going to trace Snoopy so that you have two Snoopy images, one on top of each other. Because animation happens by images in the same place in the same sequence. Um, and so, I know, so what I'm, you would do is fold this over. I'm going to have to draw a quick Snoopy on here so I can show you. Um, and you're just going to trace over your Snoopy. So hopefully you can see your Snoopy through the paper and you're just going to trace right over it. Right? This is how most animation happens. They use clear paper or, well, before computers. So you're just tracing your Snoopy. And we're just going to do our animation today with just two images, which is what the flipperama is. But usually animation has uh, the Peanuts movies, for example, usually have 12, sorry, 24 images of animation to create one second. So doing the math, if you need, you have 24 images to create one second to do one minute of animation, we're doing, you need 1,400 pictures. And if you're making a half hour movie like Charles Schultz did, you need 36,000 images in a movie. That was before computers and there were some tricks around that. But we're just doing two images today. So once you have your Snoopy traced, I'm going to draw something here really quickly so I can kind of go over, show you how it's going to work. So I'm tracing my Snoopy. So I've got my Snoopy on the outside and my Snoopy on the inside. And because I traced it, they should be in the same spot pretty much. And so don't worry about, so Snoopy's in the same exact spot. So he's not animated yet. He's not moving yet. We're going to get to that in just a, mo a moment. And once we have two Snoopies, I'm going to animate, I'm going to show you how to animate one part of Snoopy, but then you might have other ideas. But we're going to start with Snoopy's face. And that's kind of why I left Snoopy's face blank, is because on the outside, we're going to give Snoopy a very simple face. And actually, Charles Schultz's eyes and mouth and nose, his faces were very simple. 
but very expressive. So Snoopy's eyes were really just two lines. So I'm going to just do two lines. You can go ahead and give him two lines for his eyes. And I'm just going to give him a mouth like that. That's what I'm going to do on my front page of my Snoopy. So we're going to give him a really simple face on the front. Right? We're just going to keep those eyes like that. And now I'm going to show you a couple different options because while Charles Schultz's eyes and mouth were very simple, he added a lot of expression by adding additional lines. So for example, I'm just going to show you this. We don't have to draw it yet. If I gave Snoopy eyebrows like that, it changes my whole picture, right? How's Snoopy feeling? Mad, right? He's suddenly mad. But I could also maybe, uh, one of Charles Schultz's great expressions, he put little parentheses around the eyes and a face like, th a mouth like this. How's Snoopy feeling now? Yeah, worried. So what we're going to do on the inside of our drawing is um, I am going to actually give Snoopy a big smile like this with teeth and eyebrows like this. How's my Snoopy feeling now? Happy, right? So your Snoopy might not be happy inside when you flip. Maybe your Snoopy has a different expression. But what you want to do inside is give Snoopy either an angry expression or a worried expression or a great big happy expression. So the outside Snoopy has kind of a simple expression and my inside Snoopy, I'm going to do this big mouth and don't forget his eyebrows, right? So don't forget oh, the, his eyebrows, maybe they're jumping off his head. That's one great thing about cartooning is eyebrows can do things like jump off your head. And once you have two different faces, you're going to flip your drawing. So the way we do our fliparama is we hold it and we flip it like this. So we put our fingers in the bottom corner and flip it so that we're looking at the top image and the inside image. Is Snoopy's expression changing? Yeah, does it look like he's moving? You can add some things to it. So for example, when Snoopy is excited, he might be having like a symbol that tells us he's happy or mad or grumpy. So I'm going to add an explanation point over his head because my Snoopy is so happy. But if your Snoopy was angry or mad, maybe he has a black cloud over his head. And you're only going to add this into the inside Snoopy. Right? If he was worried, maybe he had a question mark. So add something over his head. Maybe it's a speech bubble even with a word. I said, or maybe there's something, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and add the exclamation point inside mine. And now when I do my fliparama, he's got his expression and more things on the page. We're going to add one more thing, and then I'm going to show you how to do our tomatropes, right? Because the other thing you can add inside is we can put Snoopy's arm, second arm, out like this. So I'm going to stick his second hand out just inside, though. And my Snoopy is going to be holding something. And your Snoopy can be holding anything you'd like him to be holding, right? If your Snoopy was angry or happy or surprised, what are you going to have your Snoopy holding? Oh, that's a great idea. So your Snoopy could just be giving a thumbs up or a high five. And my Snoopy maybe is just going to be waving. Right? So I'm going to do actually just some lines because he's just saying hi. 
So I'm going to add that arm in there. And that's another great thing about cartooning is little lines can add motion to the drawing we already have that we're trying to make move. So when you have whatever his hand is doing, we're going to flip, do the fliparama again. Yeah, so the quicker, so there you go. See, because animation depends on things moving fast. Very good. It depends on things moving quickly to sort of trick our brain into combining the images. It's actually a scientific principle called the persistence of vision. So you can add your fliparama, but we're also going to do something simple where we are going to make, we're going to go to the next step and make what I, we call tomatropes. So if you, everyone wants, should have one of these and straws. So it looks like you have it. I'm going to drop a straw. Oh, you've got a straw. Okay. So we're going to, and we're going to need scissors for this one. And I'm going to show you how this is going to work. But we are going to make a tomatrope. This is an early animation device. And it's really very similar to the fliparama, right? It involves two images. There's one for each of you and a straw. And anyone coming in, you want to sit right here? I'll put these down for you. And so this is just a different way to put two images together. And with the tomatrope, we are, we, and we, created some peanuts tomatropes for you, but we also created a blank one. But I want to point out before we start making these and everyone gets busy doing them, is that like our Snoopy fliparama, the images have to be related and they have to be connected. So our Snoopy, we just traced the same thing, but he was slightly different inside. That's what this middle fliparama is. It's the same character, and her jump rope is up, and then her jump rope is down. So there's just a little difference. This one at the top is two totally different images, but when we make them, when we flip them or spin them, it's going to look like Woodstock is on his bird bath. So what I want everyone to do is pick one of the fliparamas. We're going to do the peanuts, the peanuts one first as an example, and then we're going to move to a blank one. So pick one you like, either Woodstock on his bird bath, or I think it's Patty jump roping, and go ahead and cut out both images. So it can be either one. And we do have coloring in the back, so if you want to color them, you can do that. I'm going to cut one out really quickly too. I'm going to borrow these scissors because I'm going to show you how we're going to, what we're going to do just so we see how it goes together. And once you have your two images cut out, we are going to staple them back to back to a straw. So this is a paper straw that I handed out, and we do have extras of these so that you can make more than one. And I am putting my wood stock, I'm lining it up so that their circles are in the same spot, and I'm going to staple the top, and I'm going to staple the bottom so that it is on my straw. I'm going to flatten my straw a tiny bit so that my staple can fit. And now I can spin it and it looks like my Woodstock's on my bird bath. Can you see how it looks like Woodstock's there? So go ahead and I, like I see people coloring their images. Once you've got them cut out, you can go ahead and staple them. 
So mine got, mine got stapled a little wonky. My bird bath is kind of slipping. Its foundation isn't so great. But I said you can color. We have coloring tools in the back. And you can do the woodstock or you can do the jump roping patty. And once you kind of see how it works, then we're going to make our own, right? So then you're going to think of something you want to make. And if you don't want to do the tomatrope and you want to do another fliparama, you can. I mean, if you spin it, again, you can see them sitting there. But the other image of Patty has her jump roping, so we've actually got some motion in there. Oops. Oh, it'll be great being colored. Color's going to definitely make it pop more. You're going to be able to see it a little bit more. And then what are some things you might put if you're doing your own fliparama now, right? So we're doing peanuts things since I come from the Charles Schultz Museum. But now if you wanted to create your own, right, you could either do another fliparama or a tomatrope. So that's part of why I did my Snoopy and we just changed his facial expression. Because you could even do a tomatrope that just has a face on each side. And the face could be happy and then sad, right? And then that would be something that would change. So when we're creating animation, we need it to be similar images with something that changes. Because now we do have so we have for our blank tomatrope. Right? We have two blank circles that need something related that can be animated. So some ideas, I kind of suggested a really simple one could be a face emoji. Right, So we could do two faces and one smiling and one's unhappy. Right, And when you're going to flip it or spin it, it's going to look like that expression's changing. So that's one idea. If someone did the jump roping one back there. You can see how that works. So what are some other ideas of two related images that we could put in a tomatrope for the blank ones that you have? Who has an idea? Yeah? OK. That's a great idea, right? So you could have someone moving a little bit, like walking a little bit. So let's see, I'm going to go ahead in this blank tomatrope area here. I am going to try to cartoon just something really simple. I'm going to do the face idea that I suggested and see if we just have a face in each circle. So kind of like an emoji. So I kept it really, really simple. So I'm going to cut it out and see what it looks like. I see someone drawing their own tomatrope there. We've got our own happening here. But if you aren't sure what to do, just start with something really, really simple. Can I borrow your scissors real quick? Yeah, I'm going to cut this out. So staple it. Here, I'll help staple that. Hang on. So you do need to get the staple into the straw. Otherwise, the straw will kind of slide around a little bit. Yeah. Do you want help? You got it? So I'm going to staple mine in a minute so you can see each side. Mm 
Yeah, I can help. Yeah, so, so yeah. So here, let's go right into the straw. Okay. And then let's do it down here too. Here, let's set it down. Okay. See? Let's see how that works. Okay. Does that work? And I'm going to do it right here. So I did just a very simple, just a face. Going happy. Oops. It fell off of that side. Okay. So you can see that it can't animate when I have something entirely unrelated. So I'm going to go ahead and get this face on, the unhappy face and the happy face, and we'll see how that works. And there are more straws at the back table. So something just really simple, right? Going from happy to sad, happy to sad. And one thing about animation, since we have to draw more than one image, sometimes easier is better, right? The more complicated it is, the harder it is to draw it again and again and again. And as I mentioned before, they used to draw, have to draw, hand draw these images thousands and thousands of times to create animated movies. So, ooh, look at this. That is great drawing. Because these activities, I did want to show, are on our website. Uh, the Schultz Museum, I said, we're in Santa Rosa, but we have a whole bunch of things on our website that you can jump on and try and do at home. And I'm going to show them to you in just a moment. So here's the Tomatrope template. And it is on our website at Schultz Museum dot org backslash museum at home. So if you go to our website, just schultzmuseum.org, you can look at, uh, it's actually in the learn button, and it is an at home activities page. Um, and in case you've come to visit us in Santa Rosa, I want to show you, or in case you can't ever come to Santa Rosa, I was going to show you quickly some pictures of the museum, because it, Santa Rosa is actually where Charles Schultz himself lived for many years and worked. And we have a recreation of his office. There's his drawing desk. It's his actual desk. And he said he knew he needed to replace his desk when he wore through the center a hole so big with his cartooning that he could no longer work on it. That was the last desk he had. Um, and this is recreation of his office again. And we have all the items he surrounded himself with. And I like to think that he surrounded himself with things that gave him ideas. Because it was hard to come up with ideas, right? Even to decide what to draw for automatrope. And he had five kids. You can see their pictures in the very back there. And lots of friends and family that gave him ideas. He actually had a friend named Charlie Brown. He had a friend named Lucy Van Pelt. And he had a dog named Spike who gave him the idea to create Snoopy. In the museum, a lot of things are in fours because comic strips generally have four panels. This is the front entrance of the museum. And we have some really large pieces that try to show the breadth and depth of Charles Schultz's work. So this, is, this wall here with Charlie Brown trying to kick the football from Lucy is actually made up of comic strips. I'm going to show you a close-up of it. It is made up of over 3,000 comic strips and shows comics about the number of comic strips Charles Schultz would have made in one, uh, 10 years. So you can see it a little closer up, all the comic strips. 10 years worth of comic strips are on our wall. And we always show Charles Schultz is original comics in our galleries. So here's just a quick look at our galleries. And the museum is located across the street from an ice arena that Charles Schultz had built in 1969. So it's really in an area that Charles Schultz himself spent almost his every day. After he built the ice arena, he built an office just a few blocks away. And he would walk back and forth from the office to the ice arena. 
and have breakfast and lunch at the Warm Puppy Cafe and watch his kids ice skate or ice skate himself. So thank you so much. I think I've hit my time. Uh, take home the tomatropes that you didn't use so that you can keep drawing and cartooning. Check us out online. The museum at home has these tomatrope templates and uh, comic strip templates and a whole lot of other activities that you can just print and download and do at home. Does anyone have any questions at all? Yeah. Can I have another in the Yeah, you sure can. And thank you so much for letting me come and share. Thank you. And there are maybe some more templates on the back table, straws, and temporary tattoos.